kids are in the musical. You know, they, well, they also in this book, they took this kid over to Mongolia, and they had, um, um, uh, you know, they were doing all these, like, like chanting ceremonies and things like this, and some of it was sensory overload. The kid's giggling one minute. The next minute he's screaming because they had him underneath the drum, and he was absolutely screaming. But there was a lot of good things that kind of rhythmic um, chanting kind of music was was doing. Also, let's just take regular therapeutic riding. I've had a number of parents tell me that the kid ta- started talking on a horse. All right, let's look at, at, at simple things that we can do. What's in the riding that makes that effective? It's a rhythmic activity. Okay, let's say we're in a situation where we can't get access to the horse. You could do swinging on a swing. You could do the same thing. Also, balancing activities. Balancing activities have a real stabilizing effect on the nervous system. Plus, you have the relationship with the horse. I was just, you know, I, I'm only like one third of the way through this book, but it's, um, I'm not, I, obviously once again can't take the kids to Mongolia, <laughs> but I, and I haven't gotten to the end of it yet, so I don't know what happened. Right now he's six years old, he's not potty trained. I, you know, that would be a mess in Mongolia. <laughs> I, I'm not a, uh, in the next week I'll get it all read. Okay, the ABA, I mean, there's no question of real little kids, two and three year old kids, you know, really intensive um, one-to-one. That um, that really, um, you know, it really helps. 20 hours a week, 30 hours a week, you know, sort of ABA type of things um, really helps. Now, on the sensory issues, uh, I think sometimes I think the diets have helped on that. Um, you know, there needs to be a lot more research on sensory. In the last few years, just a couple of years or so, you go to the PubMed database, P-U-B-M-E-D. That gets you into the National Library of Medicine. Just search that on the internet. P-U-B-M-E-D. It's the abbreviation for public medicine. And and I, we need to be working on treatments and things for that. Because the sensory problems are extremely debilitating. I think they're one of the major issues in autism. How can you be social if you can't stand a shop, you can't stand to go to a restaurant, you can't stand a noise at a sporting event? You simply can't. Um, also, ABA is really good, but you also need to be doing some of the OT things, swinging things. Sometimes if the kid's ears like a bad cell phone, you get them on a swing and do some slow swinging. Also, try singing. Some of these kids learn to sing before they can speak. Uh, work, do a little ABA while he's sitting on an exercise bar, because that makes him have to balance. And sometimes when you have to constantly balance, that helps, uh, helps the ear to be less of a bad cell phone. It's not going to work for everybody, but it's simple. These are simple things. It'd be silly not to try them. Even if it only worked on one out of 15, it's such a simple thing. You know, the worst thing that happens is it's not going to hurt them, and you're going to know in just a few weeks whether it works or not. But some kids, balancing activities, the rhythmic activities, musical activities, help uh, other circuits or help the brain to process the information better. How does it work? I don't know. And there's a lot of theories out there. Most of them, I think, are rubbish. So I'd rather just say that it works in some cases. Okay, right here.